The existence of a grave mind is a terrifying discovery for a civilization to make. In the entire history of the Halo universe, there have only ever been two flood outbreaks that were able to consume enough biomass to establish a grave mind, and both those outbreaks came horrifyingly close to consuming the entire galaxy. However, despite this, the true horror of a grave mind transcends far beyond anything the games and even most Halo media dare go into. But today, we venture into that terrifying beyond. It's time to expose the terrifying reality of the Gravemind. Now, for all the deep hidden horror of the Gravemind, there are some traits that tend to get glossed over because, well, frankly, they're so obvious that you don't even think about them. Firstly, it's size. Now, we've never actually seen what a Gravemind looks like in full from head to toe or whatever the hell the Gravemind equivalent of head to toe is, but Fear not, I've done some very, very rough calculations to try and figure out its rough size. So, I used this frame here of Chief and Arbiter first meeting the Grave Mind in Halo 2, and I measured the Grave Mind in Master Chiefs. No, I'm not kidding. So, the Grave Mind is 23 7 foot 2 Master Chiefs tall. So, 23 times 7 foot 2 is 165 feet. That means that the Grave Mind, when coiled up like this, is 165 feet tall, which is just under half the length of a football field. But bear in mind that that is a highly reserved estimate as well. I mean, if the Grave Mind elongated its neck, I guarantee it'd be at least double in size, if not more. And that's just the neck. I mean, there's so much more to a Grave Mind than just a neck, a head, and a mound of biomass. Literally every piece of concept art that we have alludes to this only being the top of the form. And then there's also the fact that nowadays the term Grave Mind isn't even limited to, well, this. Grave mines can be so large now that they consume entire planets, so you can't even provide like a rough average size considering that a grave mine could hypothetically just keep growing forever. Something equally as terrifying that comes as a byproduct of its size is its strength. The extended tentacles of the grave mind, and hell, even the smaller ones, are extremely powerful. The smaller ones can lift Master Chief, a half ton super soldier, like he's a one pound weight, and the bigger ones have enough force to make an entire foreigner citadel shake, and also to hold back a pelican that's fully engaging its thrusters. Now, if the highly advanced proto grave mines tentacles in Halo Wars 2 are anything to go by, the tentacles are extremely tough as well. I mean, in Halo Wars 2, these things seemed almost impenetrable, and they weren't even created by a full grave mine, just a proto grave mine, so it's safe to say that it has resilience to back up its strength. But I mean, the most obvious source of horror here is just what a grave mind actually is. I mean, it's a gigantic tentacled beast that's made from the consumed, recycled, rotting biomass of humans, elites, brutes, grunts, drones, plants, anything organic the flood can get its hands and tentacles on in its most primitive state. On its most surface level, the grave mind is a truly horrifying entity. But come on, we knew that already, right? I mean, so far we've just pointed out the obvious and yeah, you're right. It's time to delve a little bit deeper, but trust me, before we do, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're subscribed and follow me on Twitter. The depths that we're about to plunge into are gonna get pretty nasty, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got a flood aficionado on your side to keep you safe. And well, I am that guy. What the existence of a grave mind indicates about the wider flood outbreak is enough to strike fear into the heart of even the most stalwart individual. If a grave mind merely exists, then the flood outbreak is no longer confined to a small area. The sheer size of a grave mind necessitates a ton, in fact, probably thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of tons of raw biomass. Entire local ecosystems have to be consumed, including living sentient beings, plants, and vegetation. And so the existence of a grave mind not only means that once luscious, thriving ecosystems have been defiled into rotting blightlands, but it's a terrifying confirmation that the outbreak is no longer small in scale. In fact, it's quite the opposite. And in keeping with this, the grave mind's existence also means that the flood have evolved. No longer are they restrained by the primitive shackles of the feral stage of evolution that an outbreak begins in. The flood have now advanced onward to the coordinator stage. 
Marking the second known stage of the Flood's evolutionary trail, the coordinated stage of evolution brings with it some horrifying traits. The flood infection has spread wide enough to allow the supercell to create hives and secrete spores into the air, which makes the flood airborne. It also no longer requires hosts to add to its infected numbers. Supercells can be generated out of seemingly nowhere to create highly specialized and lethal pure forms. And because of the amount of biomass consumed, local environments have been turned into blightlands. Highly dangerous, impassable regions consumed entirely by the parasite, modified by the supercell to create the perfect environment to facilitate further flood growths. Structures like the hive and defences should anyone dare to launch a full-scale assault on their now parasite-ridden soil. Should any fool attempt such a perilous act, Ravenous Blightstalker pure forms that patrol the wastes of the Blightland will hunt any uninfected host to further add to the outbreak's biomass. But worst of all, reaching the coordinator stage now means that the Flood have a leader. As the name implies, the fighting Flood forms, so the infection forms, the carrier forms, the combat forms, etc., are relatively feral and unguided in the feral stage. But with the dawn of the coordinator stage, they're all connected to the hive mind of the grave mind, who, with exceptional intelligence, is able to command them in battle, using unparalleled strategy and planning to overcome even the most prepared forces. And that, to me, is the ultimate terrifying reality of the grave mind. Not its size or its appearance, but rather its intelligence and the byproducts of that. The grave mind's battlefield effectiveness, both in physical and psychological warfare, is immense, absolutely bar none. Not only is it intelligent enough to command seemingly infinite numbers of infantry, vehicles and fleets of ships, but it can speak through combat forms to intimidate and terrify its enemies on the field and even form reactionary alliances with its enemies should the need arise, as we saw in Halo 2 and Halo 3. You've got to remember, a Gravemind's ultimate goal, and by extension the Flood's ultimate goal as well, is total galactic consumption, and it's willing and smart enough to do anything it needs to to achieve that goal. But its intelligence goes far beyond just battlefield effectiveness. Because of what the source of the Grave Miner's intelligence actually is, it's privy to some of the deepest and most esoteric information in the history of not just the galaxy, but likely the universe as well. See, the Grave Miner's knowledge and personality don't just come into creation when it's formed. They're in fact those of the Primordial, the last precursor and the first Grave Mind. Now, the Precursors are the gods of creation in the Halo universe. They were hyper-advanced, eldritch-like beings that existed tens if not hundreds of millions of years ago and were responsible for the creation of all life in the galaxy, from humanity to the prophets, the foreigners and beyond. Their existence is complicated and very, very difficult to comprehend, but one of their main beliefs was a philosophical concept known as neural physics, which basically means that everything in existence, and I mean literally everything from us to planets to stars to the phone or TV that you're watching this video on, are all living entities. Now, that makes absolutely no sense, and it's not supposed to. You see, the Precursor's intelligence was so far beyond the comprehension of even the most intelligent beings in the galaxy that nobody can truly grasp how any of their concepts really work. All we know is that those concepts are actually in existence, they're real, and using these concepts, when the Primordial was killed some 100,000 years ago, its consciousness survived the destruction of its mortal body by being woven into the fabric of existence, per neural physics, only to inhabit a grave mind upon its creation and become its consciousness. So, to cut a very long story short, the grave mind's personality and intelligence are the very same ones that the Primordial held, which in turn means that the grave mind possesses all the knowledge that the Primordial held as well. And given what I've just described, I don't think I need to elaborate on how truly terrifying that thought is. It's a kind of terror that goes far beyond something just being frightening to experience. I mean, this thing possesses knowledge that would quite literally undo all of humanity's understanding of history, of our creation, of religion, and of the galaxy itself. The foundations of everything that we believe to be true 
wouldn't just be shook, they'd be shattered. The psychological torment that a grave mind could very easily inflict on a populace far surpasses anything that humanity or any other species has ever encountered before. But to bring it all back down to the terror of the flood itself, because the parasite was able to so easily overwhelm both ancient humanity and the foreigners all those millennia ago, that means that the grave mind also possesses intimate knowledge of how to outsmart and annihilate races that are infinitely more advanced than Halo's humanity. It's privy to all the tactics and strategy that it employ to annihilate the two most technologically advanced races in galactic history. Nothing that currently exists in the Halo universe could, at least theoretically, outsmart a grave mind on the battlefield. And you know what? Even if it could, it'd still be susceptible to infection. The Gravemind also has intimate knowledge of ships of all kinds, from ancient, long-dormant foreign vessels to modern-day UNSC, Covenant, or Banished ships, and so, by extension, also has intimate knowledge of slipspace travel. In fact, its knowledge of FTL travel far outmatches anything in the current Halo universe. In Halo 3, it was able to use High Charity to jump from Mars to the Ark right on the outer rim of the galaxy without the need for a dedicated portal to the installation like the one that we had to use. With this knowledge, as soon as the Gravemind infects literally just one ship, the flood outbreak becomes impossible to track. Calling it galactic whack-a-mole frames it quite lightly, but the Gravemind could literally just infect a bunch of ships and send them all off to like the distant dark corners of the universe to infect distant planets and, as it did during its war with the foreigners, consume the galaxy slowly and quietly from the outside in. This makes it even easier for the Flood to consume more biomass and eventually assimilate enough knowledge from its victims to evolve into its fourth and final stage of evolution, the transgalactic stage, where the Gravemind and its infected gain the ability to spread to different galaxies. During the Fauna Flood War, it was heavily believed that the Gravemind had actually reached this stage and had consumed tens of thousands of planets in countless different galaxies. Now, if that is true, granted it was just a theory from the Librarian, but if the Librarian was right in that assumption, those galaxies are likely still infected now because the Halos can't reach them. But you know what? Talking about different galaxies out there that may be entirely consumed by the Flood might be a different topic for a different day. But biological infection isn't the only thing the Grave Mind is capable of orchestrating. Hands down to me, the single most terrifying aspect of the Grave Mind's intelligence is its ability to transpose that infection over to the digital realm, courtesy of the Logic Plague. Now, the Logic Plague is going to be getting its own dedicated video soon, so. Firstly, make sure you sub so you don't miss that. Uh, and secondly, that means that I'm just going to sum it up shortly here. Basically, if you don't know, the Logic Plague is the digital informational version of Flood Infection. As soon as a grave mind is formed, nothing is uncompromisable anymore. AIs that control flagships, coordinate strike missions, and maintain the entire infrastructure of the UNSC, computer systems and networks that form the entire backbone of 26th century humanity all are susceptible to infection. Typically, the Logic Plague has to be transmitted personally, like directly by the Grave Mind, as was the case with Mendicant Bias, the most infamous case of Logic Plague. But if the outbreak has progressed too far, like it did during the Foreign Flood War, then literally any Flood form gains the ability to transmit it. That means that a combat form merely being in the vicinity of an AI or computer network is enough for that entire entity to be infected, to fall into rampancy, and to be assimilated into the Flood's vast hive mind of intelligence. But somehow, it gets worse. The Logic Plague doesn't just stop at digital entities. A grave mind can choose to infect a biological host with the Logic Plague over regular physical infection. Now, this has only ever been known to have happened once with the Didact, and it has some pretty extreme situational benefits. To infect a biological entity with the Logic Plague, the Grave Mind essentially talks to it, divulging horrifying realities about the true nature of the Flood and other such things in a bet to essentially tear its victim's sanity apart, causing chaos and demoralization in its enemy's forces when their leader appears to have, for all intents and purposes, gone insane. Honestly, the Grave Mind's psychological warfare capabilities 
are even more terrifying than its physical warfare capabilities. Think about how cataclysmic this becomes when later down the line, any flood form can transmit the logic plague. Say, hypothetically, an infected ship full of combat forms were to land on a fresh, uninfected planet. Their mere presence in a town or a city would be more than enough to make their enemy yield. Every AI, network, and system that the combat forms come into contact with would be corrupted and controlled by the hive mind, and all the civilians and soldiers that are stationed there to defend the planet would be sent insane for merely being in the presence of the infected, and then, later on, once their insanities were in its course, they'd just be used as biomass. The Flood may well be the single most overpowered parasite in the entirety of sci-fi, if you ask me, and honestly, I pin that down to the Grave Miner's intelligence. In the chilling words of a foreigner AI present in the final days of the Foreigner Flood War, the Flood is no idiot parasite. And that to me is the terrifying reality of the Flood, but primarily of the Gravemind. So, what's the most terrifying thing about the Gravemind to you? Is it its raw size and power? Is it its intelligence or something else entirely? Let me hear it down below in the comments. So, with that said, I want to give a huge thank you to all of my amazing patrons for the continued support over there, as per usual, and thank you all so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll catch you all in the next one.